Welcome to the Online Store Success Podcast. If you're determined to create, launch and scale your very own fashion, lifestyle or beauty product business online without falling into those expensive pitfalls, this podcast is for you, my friend. I'm your host, Jody Minto. I'm an award-winning seven-figure fashion founder and e-commerce business coach. I'm also a certified digital marketer, meta ad specialist and mum of two teens and two fur babies. I started my online fashion store from scratch when I was working full-time in the corporate world, juggling young kids and living in the Middle East. I eventually scaled that business to become a a seven-figure-a-year online brand and sold that business last year. This show is dedicated to showing you how I did it exactly and how you can do it too. Hit that subscribe button right now so you never miss an episode and let's dive into this week's episode. And if you want to know the five major online store mistakes that are costing you sales in your online store right now, go and grab my freebie at jodyminto.com slash mistakes. All right, let's get started with this week's episode. Welcome back to part two of this episode where I'm sharing with you what steps I took, what things moved the needle for me when it came to taking my online fashion store from market stalls on the weekend to online to those few handfuls of sales, those $3,000 a month sales to the $10,000 a month sales to the $170,000 a month in sales. Because boy, it's a journey. And if you are a fellow online store owner, if you are just starting out, you're probably in the trenches and thinking, oh my Lord, how am I ever going to get to 170,000, maybe even $10,000 feels like a real stretch right now. And for those of you in the really early stages, you've either just launched and maybe you've not yet made your first $10,000 at all in your business, let alone in a month, I want to assure you, you're in the trickiest part because right now you're pretty much throwing spaghetti at the wall. You're flying blind. You don't really know what's working until you've been putting yourself out there, getting website visitors and hopefully making some sales and then getting some feedback. And I want to reassure you that, yes, I know it feels really, really hard. It also is in a really exciting time in your business. But once you get that formula right, things become a lot easier because you move beyond that trial and error phase and you move more into that refinement and simplification and focusing your efforts and attention on what you know actually works, what sells, what brings you in the most profits and the most joy and happiness when it comes to how you want your business to look. So I'm giving you a high level overview of the different steps, the different things that helped me in my journey going from this side hustle business that was my get out of the corporate world escape plan and then turning it into a million dollar a year business and I eventually then sold that at the beginning of uh, 2023. So on the previous episode we touched on the first layers of the first four or so elements that are so crucial and if you haven't listened to that go back and listen to it uh, episode 87 I think and uh, go back and listen to that because they are the core foundations and it is also the hardest piece of the puzzle. It very much ties into what it is that you're either offering and selling, how much you're selling it for, who you're selling it to, why they're even buying it, and then how you're presenting your brand and your, not just your aesthetics, but your words, your your messaging to the world. And that really is the hardest part, where especially in the very early stages where you're kind of just making it up as you go. So Once we've got those foundations right, we then start to see a little movement. We start to be able to get insights as to the analytics, like who is actually coming to the site. You're starting to get customer reviews and things like that. And this is where we very much then drill down on the traffic and conversions piece. Now, traffic and conversions rolls off the tongue in that order, traffic and conversions. But really, it should be in the other order. We should be addressing conversions first and those elements that I talked about in the previous episode is very much talking to the conversions piece because 
after many, many years in this e-commerce space and even I've been in, you know, working for myself in different businesses, this is my fourth business over the past 20 years now, um, the thing is, I know, it doesn't many matter how much traffic or how many eyeballs land on your business, it's not going to make an ounce of difference or help you become successful if your offer itself is no good. So when it comes to product-based businesses, your offer is your actual product and what solution it solves. And if that is not resonating with the people that are actually seeing it or coming to your website, or if it's not solving their problem, or if it's not attractive, appealing, irresistible to them, it doesn't matter how much traffic you drive to your website, you will fall flat when it comes to hitting those sales goals. So something that happens a lot is people come to me and say, I have a traffic problem, Jody. Um, you know, I'm getting people to my website, but they're just not buying. And more often than not, it's not really a traffic problem. It's actually a conversions problem. And like I said, conversions is the hardest piece of the puzzle. And it's what I go really in depth with in my online store success program. Because once you have that conversion piece right, once you know you've got all of your ducks lined up in a row very nicely when it comes to your product, who it is you're serving, the transformation you provide, your brand and your branding message and your key marketing messages. And then we sprinkle on top of that a, a winning website, a, way, a website that's really attractive, really easy to use and highlights and positions your products as best as possible. Once you've got that done, the rest is kind of easy because, now don't come at me, the traffic piece of the puzzle in our e-com equation of traffic conversions, the traffic piece of the puzzle is actually the easiest part. Now, I've just read this book, which was fabulous. Um, I think Sabri Subi, who owns, um, I think, Kong Marketing. Anyway, I can't remember. I'll link it in the show notes. And he mentions in his book, and it's so true, that never has there been an easier time for us as business owners, online store owners, any kind of online business owner to drive traffic to our site because with a, a few clicks of a button, we can have set up a Facebook ad and have many, many hundreds of visitors coming to our website by the end of the day, depending on how much money you've set your budget, of course, and maybe it's by the end of the week. Now, the problem is we can, anyone can pretty much do that. You know, look, I teach how to do Facebook ads, but you could probably find a video on YouTube on how to set up your very first Facebook ad. And you too could be sending lots and lots of traffic to your web store very quickly. But the thing is whether or not they actually buy something on the other end. And that takes harder work. That takes having to really get into the weeds of what it is that you do. Are you serving the right problems for the right people at the right price point in the right places and all those different things, right? So the traffic piece is really easy. We can actually go and just buy traffic like a, as if it was a supermarket with the click of a button. If it's not Facebook ads, it might be Google ads, it might be TikTok ads, it might be Pinterest ads, it might be whatever, right? Any kind of advertising sends traffic to, to whatever it is that we're selling. But if we haven't got that conversions piece of the puzzle right, it's all going to be for nothing. And you're going to then turn around and say, Jody, Facebook ads didn't work for me. It was a big fat waste of money. I've been burnt by other courses and other coaches who um, showed me how to do it. And I did it and I wasted all this money. And the thing is, it's because more often than not for coaches like myself, course creators, the traffic piece of the puzzle is actually really quite easy and enjoyable to teach. And and the outcome at the end of that, those kind of programs is like, oh yeah, I know how to run ads or I know how to do this or I know how to do email marketing or whatever it might be, right? But they're not really touching on the conversions part because the conversions is harder. It's harder to get right. So this is why I'm sort of hammering on around traffic and conversions. And like I said, I'd like to flip it around and say conversions and traffic, but it just doesn't <laughs> flow as easily off the tongue as what traffic and conversions are. So anyway, I digress. The first piece of the puzzle, which I covered in the first episode part of this uh, series, is very much talking to the conversions piece. And like I said, this is what we really dig into in the first half of my online store success program, which is coming back and opening up for enrollment the first week of September. Go to onlinestoresuccess.com, put your name on the wait list. It's awesome. And I'm 
completely revamping, re-recording all of the modules as well to very much dig into this conversions piece. Because like I said, this truly is the biggest challenge that I come across for online store owners. It's not the traffic. A lot of people think it's traffic. I just need more website visitors. But when we come across and look at the conversions piece of the puzzle, we're like, you know what? We need to address this first. So we very much, that's what we look at first and foremost is conversions because like I said, then once we've got that right, then we pull the lever for traffic. And traffic is what I'm talking to you about today in the sense of what moved the needle for my business. So as I mentioned, I went right deep into those foundational layers for Island Co for my fashion business. I figured out what exactly people wanted from me, why they were buying from it. And the rest became so much easier. Then it was all about just turning on the traffic, going to that traffic supermarket and buying traffic from Facebook ads and working with influencers to send more eyeballs to what the offer was, what people were already telling us that they wanted. And for me, the traffic piece looked like this. It looked like list building and email marketing. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is that we should always be building our list. It shouldn't be just at different promotional periods or something like that. It shouldn't be an afterthought. Your list building activities should be something that you're working on all the time. And that is encouraging people to come to your website and sign up for your list because those folks are warm. They are quality people who know what it is that you do and what you sell and have put their hand up and opted in and said, yes, please, I want to be on your email list. Send me stuff. I'm interested. I might not be quite there yet, but send me stuff. So list building and then, of course, the email marketing piece and not just sending out an email once in a blue moon, which many people seem to do. No, sending regular emails or EDMs where you are sharing what's new, sharing what your best sellers are, sharing the latest re reviews or feedback you've got, sharing different things to invite people and remind people to come back to your store on a regular basis, but also your automated flows, things like abandoned cart, your welcome series. Now I've got an email, not an email, an episode way back yonder where we break down the actual recommended automated flows that you should have set up and whether it's in Klaviyo or whether it's in MailChimp or whether it's in Shopify email, I don't care which system you use, just make sure you've got them. And if you need help with figuring out what that looks like and a framework and how many emails you should send and what sort of timeline you should send them across, again, this is all what I teach inside of online store success. So that email and list building was really, really important. And when I was doing market stalls, I would actually get people to put their name on a piece of paper in their email and put their piece of paper in a fishbowl in the middle of my market store and say, and uh, you know, I'd obviously invite them to do so and say, you know, I'm actually giving away a gift voucher once a month. I'm going to draw a name out of the fishbowl. So if you want to be in it to win it, put your name in. You'll also obviously be signing up for my newsletter list. You can opt out at any time. Um, and that's how I initially got started with my, my email list. And, and having that email list meant when the day that I finally published and made my online store live, I had a whole list of people I could email and I got and I got sales on day one, a number of sales on day one. So list building and email marketing is something that's really important. On top of that is, of course, that social media marketing, the organic social media marketing, turning up on socials. Now, I know this feels really laborious, turning up on socials. I don't love it. I, and I'm very sort of, I'm all or nothing. Like I'll show up heaps for a couple of weeks and then you won't see me again for a while. But this social media presence helps us connect further with our, our potential customers. It shows potential customers that might later then see our ad somewhere that the lights are still on in our business. We are still showing up. There's nothing worse than seeing an ad for a business and liking what you see. Click on, on their website, having a little look around and you think, you know what, I'm going to go have a look at their Instagram. Jump over to Instagram and they've not posted in three months. I instantly think, oh, that business must have gone out a bit, you know, they're, they're no longer, right? So it's kind of a necessary evil having to show up on social media. Yes, you don't have to live there. You don't have to show your face all the time. You don't have to share your deepest, darkest family secrets or anything like that. But you need to turn up there because customers are savvy. Online customers will stalk you and want to have a look and see. They want to see what people might be commenting on your posts and how you're applying. So you absolutely do have to turn up there. For sure. And then if you can really optimize that and develop a great content strategy 
Um, again, what I teach inside of Online Store Success, it makes it not only great <laughs> and, and turning up and showing the lights and so on for the business, but it helps you drive more traffic and sales to your online store. So the organic socials is really important. And then my final favorite way to turn up that traffic as quickly as possible is of course with meta ads, Facebook and Instagram ads. And I talked to, I'm blue in the face about Facebook ads on this podcast, so I'm not going to go into that today. It's also what I coach uh, everyone on inside of my programs. Online store success, we have an introduction to Facebook ads, but that introduction consists of around five hours of different video tutorials. So it is very much a very thorough introduction, but things like my mastermind program, my seven figure scale collective is where I'm actually inside of your ads account as that second set of eyes coaching and checking your ads with you every other week on our uh, small group calls. So, um, so yeah, so the Facebook ads piece, and that's what took my business from that 10 K months to those hundred seven and 170 K months. So by the time I got to 10 K months, I'd done that refinement and I was, well, I was, I was very well in the refinement stage, figuring out the product mix, understanding my customer really well, ensuring my my branding as well as my key messaging aligned and that I was list building and email marketing. And then, like I said, going hard (laughs) with the traffic at the traffic supermarket that is Facebook and Instagram ads to then drive that traffic. And as I mentioned, what gets you from zero to 10K a month is very much about getting that conversion piece of the puzzle right. Once you've got that, it's then really going ham with the traffic piece. And the traffic piece is what will get you from 100K months to 100K months, right? It's turning up that traffic dial now that you've got the conversion piece of the puzzle sorted. And that, like I said, is easier. Your challenges then become making sure that you have enough product to sell you know if you're selling ten thousand a month and now you're selling 10 times that making sure you've got enough product or there's more coming in the pipeline in order to satisfy those customers because what you will then find is that you potentially sell out you know maybe you sell out at eighty thousand dollars a month and you could have sold twice as much but you've run out of stock but by that point in your business you know confidently what you can invest in stock wise because you've got all of that conversion piece of the puzzle already sorted you're very clear on what your hero product is and you have got the profit margins and things like that so i hope this episode was helpful and to recap the traffic and conversions is is the two main pieces of the puzzle when it comes to your e-com success and the conversions piece is the hardest piece and that is the piece that you will be probably wrangling in the first even one to four years of your business and once you've figured out that the rest becomes all about driving just like how do we leverage this how do we just make more of this happen by turning up that traffic dial and this particularly like the conversion piece making sure that we've got this right then like followed by, okay, now it's time for traffic is exactly what I teach inside of online store success. So thank you for joining me. Like I said, go and put your name on the the wait list for online store success. I do have a free challenge coming up uh, the first week of September. I really should have my calendar in front of me when I record these, shouldn't I? And you can find the link to register your place for this free challenge. It's a five-day challenge. It's called Ecom Traffic and Conversions. What do you know? And I'm going to take you more into this and share more insights into this as well as give you some um, strategies, what's working, what's not working, as well as uh, insights into what online store success looks like if you wanted to continue working on uh, across the 12 weeks inside of that coaching program. All right, that's enough for me today. Good luck with nailing your traffic and conversions with your online store. And I hope to see you either inside of my free challenge or inside of online store success very soon. Bye for now. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Online Store Success with me, Jodie Minto. If you loved it, please share it with your friends on Instagram and tag me at I am Jodie Minto so I can say thank you. And if you really want to make my day, please go ahead and leave me a review on Apple Podcasts and give me a follow. If you'd like my help in starting or scaling your online store, be sure to check out my free resources and programs at jodyminto.com. Thanks again and... Same time, same place next week. Bye for now.